I'd like to call the December meeting to end if you can the Board of Education to order. Or I have a special treat back for we get, I have not, of course. The jail is the number. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Baranato, members of the Board of Education, Mrs. Driver, Mr. Adams, and Dr. Ott, for your support of the Manchester School District Gospel Chorus. Under the direction of Ms. Taylor Bullock, the students are faithfully preparing their 54th annual tribute to Dr. King, 54 years. Unbelievable. The concert and community event will take place at the high school on January 13th as we honor Dr. King on what would have been his 94th birthday. So to spread the word about the gospel chorus, Mr. Baranato has invited the students to share one song this evening. We chose one of our favorites uh, from the gospel chorus, and to say happy holidays and listen to everyone on Friday, January 13th. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
Mr. Staples. Here. Mr. Keller. Here. Mr. Servant. Here. Ms. Georgiano. Here. Mr. Murphy. Here. Ms. Wingler. Ms. Carroll. Here. Mr. Pate. Here. Adequate notice was published on Monday, January 10, 2022, in the Asbury Park Press. Mr. Manchester Times was advised to specify the time and place of the meeting and statement that this effect shall be entered into the notice of this meeting. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances. Whereas this public body is of the opinion that certain cases presently now therefore be resolved by the Manchester County Board of Education as follows. Public shall be excluded here and after specified subject matter. The general nature of the subject matter is to be discussed in the legal personnel negotiation. To anticipate that these matters will be made public within 60 days, and this resolution shall be promptly effective immediately. I have a motion to Second. All in favor? Reconvene the Houston Remaining Manchester County Board of Education. Mr. Stables. Here. Mr. Keller. Here. Ms. Georgiano. Mr. Merchant. Here. Ms. Mount. Here. Mr. Here. Here. Uh, please join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. This is a busy time of year. It's the season starts on the south. Okay, we really like when that happens. Um, my report tonight will be relatively short. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, I've been able to go into the uh, concert at Whiting. It's out there. It's right here somewhere. Um, it's just right there. Um, it was a fantastic job that the students all did out there. Uh, I'm always reminded of the sound of music that one needs to line up on paraphrase to hear. How wonderful to hear the sounds of it. Sounds of our young people listening to this song, and that's just always uplifting to hear the young people sing the song. 
Well, they all keep the pensions, yeah. The industry pension, and yes, who cares? You know, there have been good times. It was fun to watch, and it was really an enjoyable concert. Then I was able to go to the high school concert last Thursday, and I saw that one. Uh, they come a long way. Uh, my kids are still back in our age uh, to see the, the size of it. And I was really impressed last time at the middle school concert, the size of the band. That's a that's a good testament to the administration of the teachers that we have here as well. Then uh, this last weekend, of course, we celebrated uh, our holiday drive for the 80 families in town. Uh, numbers seem a little bit down as far as participation, but not in the number of packages on the floor. It's uh, very inspiring to see that, see the number of people came out and raised their help in a practical way that people that need the help coming through. It was really encouraging to see that on the time of holiday drive. Holiday drive. And then I'm very remiss if I did not it's the last time that from Mr. Dean with us, Mr. Staples, term is inspiring. Thank you very much for your last three years of your wisdom. It's been appreciated and needed several times. We uh, didn't always agree, but we always agreed to be part of it. Yeah, we always <laughs> to be on the other side. And Mr. Mentor's also our last meeting with Director Strata. So I uh, appreciate your insight and your uh, help. Thank you that you're the district that's fired. And uh, we wish you both continued help. We're actually going to um, start with uh, Dr. Tracy Severn. She is going to walk us through our strategic planning process. Roger, if you can get the presentation up, I'd appreciate it. And um, Dr. Severn actually works very closely with our staff already. She has been for the past couple of years. She's a former superintendent. Um, and what we love about Dr. Severn is that she tells us the truth. She tells us just exactly where we need to go, looks at data, and tells us where we've been. Um, and she's been very insightful with working with the staff and just wanted to share with you with how she's going to work with the entire district to help us develop a strategic plan, uh, plan for the district. All right, good evening. Good evening, everyone. It's a real honor and pleasure to be here. I'm excited to share with you how we will uh, engage in the strategic planning process with the entire Manchester Township community. So why do a plan? Well, very simply, is to create a plan that will guide the decisions that are made and the efforts in which you engage to achieve the mission, the vision, and the goals of the community. And I want to pause here to mention that when I have done this work with previous districts, I brought a couple of the, fly of the flyers that we use to promote the work. And I know they're kind of small, but here's the point that I'd like to make. When I've worked with other districts, the choice that we made was to call this a process that's about looking forward. Sometimes when people hear the term strategic planning, it sounds technical. It sounds like something for which you need a degree. What you need to engage in this process is a commitment in the welfare of the students. You need to care about the mission of the district and the important work that they do to serve this community. So when we call it looking forward, what I have found is that people see it as far more invitational and that folks are willing uh, to come out and certainly able to contribute. So how does this process take place? Here are the really the stages and steps. First, uh, one of the pieces we would include is to identify and analyze some of the data sources. What are the outcomes? What are the throughputs? What are the uh, data sources that reveal or answer the question, how are we doing as a district and how do we know? I also then will facilitate a series of in-person input sessions with the Board of Education, with caregivers and community members, with faculty members, and perhaps most importantly, students. So the way I conduct strategic planning is unique from as I have seen it done in many other places where, and no offense intended to the board, the board gets together, they review their thoughts, their ideas, and set up um, a plan of course, for the district. I believe that no district sincerely wants to improve their district unless they are willing and interested in hearing the voices of the students and the staff. So this process is completely inclusive. And I meet with students, representatives from grades three through 12, and I engage them in a process of uh, hearing from them about what they need so that they learn and feel connected to their school. 
Uh, we conducted a district-wide survey so that every member of the community has an opportunity to share their input. I then aggregate and analyze the feedback and present the findings to the board. So we begin with the tour. I will go to every school in the district and talk with student representatives and staff members. And when I meet with the students, I tell them this. I brought a couple of uh, examples. So just recently, I was working with a district in Bergen County. And when I meet with third through fifth grade, I say to them that I believe that a great school does two things really well. One is it creates connection where everyone feels known, noticed, valued, respected. So what would we do to create a strong sense of community and connection within our school? The other thing that schools do well is they teach in ways that kids learn. And students have a very clear understanding of what helps them and frankly, what doesn't. So I engage them in that process. So I have a couple of pictures of students who are engaged in that process filling this in, they talk amongst themselves and they share their thoughts and ideas of what would make a great school. I take all of that data and I do a content analysis. I look at the themes, I look at the ideas that the students are sharing. Um, one student even came with her own list, my ideas to make the school better, which is thinking adorable. If you look at what she wrote, she wants a hairdressing class, a baking class, board games. Can you imagine board games? And the privilege of choosing clubs. I know you can't see it well, but everything that students share or submit is honored, is acknowledged, and is included in the data analysis. So then I, I aggregate that and present it uh, to, uh, to the board and to administrators so that we can act on what the students have to had to say. Um, you know, and here's what I believe. Anyone who thinks that students can't or won't have something meaningful to say about the kind of school that would serve them best simply has to ask them. They are amazing. So then I go to the middle school. Now everyone knows if you're going to go to the middle school, you know, you got to cool it up a little bit. So we cool it up. The questions are the same. The sheet is a little different. And I'll tell you, anyone here have a middle schooler? They have a lot to say. Uh, and so we create that forum for them to be heard. Uh, recently then, I went to the high school. And again, I changed the form, but I don't change the questions. What we want to know from kids from grades 3 to 12 is how could we create a great school where you would feel well served, cared for, and learned. So we talk, look, look at this high school. Like, See, that's how cool high school kids sit. They're like, yeah, I don't to say. And when we listen, um, they have a lot to share. So I take all of their handwritten papers, I aggregate that, type them up, and look for patterns. Then we talk with the staff. So this is staff who are meeting in a media center, and I've also met with staff in a gym. So depending on the size of the staff, we find their location. And what you would see is that people are leaning in and talking with each other. Here's the point that I want to make. This process includes 100% engagement and 100% transparency. So what the people are doing here is they're leaning forward and they're talking to the person across from them, asking and answering five key questions. What do you see as the strengths of the district? What are you proud of? What are our assets? What do you see as the weaknesses? Areas where there's space between what is and what could what do you see as opportunities? Ways to use our resources, our relationship to build a great uh, school district. What do you see as the internal threats to the district? Things that lie within the schools, the facilities, morale, things that, that shape the schools from within. What do you see as the ex external threats? Things that are happening outside of the walls of the school district, but that impact the work that is done within the school district. All of that work is then aggregated by the people in the room. People work with their light question colleague and they report it out to the entire group. I then take those post-it sheets home, I type them exactly as they are, I aggregate them and make it part of the data collection process. This is the community event in Little Falls. So we had about 80 people come and every single voice was heard. 
everyone had this was part of a, a, of a great conversation and used to shape the future uh, in that district. So what's the overall timeline? Here it is, here I am. It's December, this is the board overview. Uh, in January, we'll start to identify the data sources. I'll see that, of course, the district administrators. February, meet with the administrators. And in March, I'm going on a tour. I'll be in every school. I'll be talking with students and staff, and we will have a community forum as well that will be run in exactly the same way as the faculty. It looks a lot like speed dating for all of you with speed dating. No, I don't have to raise hands. So with, right, everyone talks to everyone, and we put that information together. In April, we'll develop and distribute the survey. In May, I will analyze it, draft some goals and plans, and in June, we'll be back here uh, sharing all of that feedback that we gathered over time. So then what? Uh, synthesize the findings into strengths and areas for attention. Um, I would offer recommendations for goal setting and action planning. And in much of the contemporary thinking, the five-year plan is one that is, in many ways, um, I think isn't quite as agile, isn't quite as able to just get our arms around. So, so in much of the strategic planning work that's being done now, people are using a three-year plan because that gives us a reasonable opportunity to forecast what to think about what's happened in the past three years. So we want to be able to stay current. And one of the goals is to have a plan on a page. One of the things that's happened in the past is plans become a tone so heavy, so dense, so cumbersome that no one knows what it is. And, and it, we lose the ability to have it as a living document to guide our work. So this would all culminate in that plan on a page if that's something that you would like me to be um, a part of, that would be um, included as part of the process. So that's the overview, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any of the board members have questions? Thank you, Dr. Severance. We appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Seeing as though we have lots of um, families here, we're going to just go slightly out of order in case you want to slide out after our student recognition presentation. Uh, but I'm going to start with that and then Mr. Trojo, so you'll be able to do your presentation on our assessment data. Is that okay? That's fine. Thank you. And if the principals are here, I'm going to ask you um, just to come up. We're going to do some, some pictures with the students that you've invited if they're here. And uh, let's get started. So first we have Ridgeway Elementary School. Olivia Del Mundo, are you here? Or staff member in the school. 
junior impact members work extremely hard giving up their lunch or research, recess in order to get to those top tasks each link to a message, sort them by grade level, and then finally deliver them to each classroom. It was a huge success. Charlotte Cherry, is she here? Right. So Charlotte is being recognized for her peer leadership in helping the pre-K students amazing Thanksgiving Day parade. Honor Society, 
help lead the community in service projects to rescue the pointer dogs and cats and recently found some healthy and unsafe living conditions. Um, contacted the local shelter and the popcorn park zoo to accept donations um, and accepted to paint in George Mason so far and waiting for others. Nick had a dinner with his grandmother for her birthday, so senses the door. Okay. Yeah. Um, everything that we're looking 
again on the state website and I've checked it before I presented tonight, is that the pathways will still be in place for the class of 2024 and going beyond that. As of this night tonight, 2023 has no assessment requirement for graduation. Of course, they do have a requirement to make sure that they have attendance, credit, these courses, but the testing requirement, including the portfolio field, is not something that is required of our current seniors. Those are all local requirements. It is. So it would be the 12 graders took this assessment in the spring last year. And then we actually were on a webinar looking and finding more information about how we were going to proceed. Because previously they would have a course that would be in place. It's our CCR course that would let us know if our students needed a portfolio appeal. At that particular webinar, which I think was given in August, we were told that it was considered a field test. So it was very good information. When the students sat for it, there was no knowledge of that. And of course, we are always looking at every testing cycle to be important. What can we gain from it? How can we help our students? But of course, then in August, we're told that this particular class does not have that testing requirement. Did they change it to a field test after they got the results of this course and the results were? Well, we just recently received the results, so I really can't answer that. Concern, Mr. Pate, as you're saying, because obviously the scuttle was out there already, but we had no knowledge or anything definitive. So at that point, it was we're taking it, we're doing the best we can, and we're going to get information because we weren't sure at that point. Thank you, Mr. Um, The next part of the information is to our strong assessment. This was given to our students in the fall. The testing window was initially supposed to be till the end of September. The DOE then once again allowed us to extend it until the end of October which Mr. George actually allowed us to give a little bit more time to make sure that we weren't giving consecutive assessments to our students. Um, of course, this was based upon a subset of prioritized, you know, prior year academic um, information or standards. It was administered in ELA in grades four through 10, and in mathematics in grades four through 12, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, and science in grades six through nine. So, what I included in your presentation is summary results of New Jersey graduation proficiency assessment. And there's just multiple slides on this. It's an analysis, it's a breakdown for students that passed and students that didn't and how they performed in terms of um, the state. And then of course we have a demographic breakdown. All of this is on the website and there also is a very detailed presentation that I tried to keep as brief as I could, but it's about 17 minutes. It's well worth listening to. I appreciate the board members and some of the public that have already looked at it and asked questions. And then of course, I included a link if you wanted to see the types of questions that the students are being asked. So that link on the bottom includes um, the New Jersey graduation proficiency assessment sample questions, things that the students were asked in 11th grade when they were taking that test. Of course, then I also included the Start Strong summary results. My team and I went through it very thoroughly. We created charts. We included um, information which I just spoke to you about. Please understand that this is a diagnostic assessment. It's intended really to drive instruction. It also is just a snapshot. It's not as comprehensive as the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment. It's given in a very short period of time. It's 45 to 60 minutes. There's not a lot of writing involved. It's mostly multiple choice. So they can turn it around very quickly. So we gave our oh, window was in October. We got our results immediately and we were able to share them with our teachers right then and there. It allows the teachers to be able to look at the questions, see where kids may have struggled, and to be able to shift perhaps things that children need that were prerequisite the other thing I want you to understand is if a child took it in eighth grade, they're not being tested on eighth grade material. They're being tested on the preceding year. So it's seventh grade math and it's seventh grade ELA. So it allows the teacher to say, are they 
ready for eighth grade material. If they're not, these are the things that I need to work on. These are the prerequisites that I need to develop a stronger foundation for them. And of course, I included the creative marking chart. And I'm just a visual person. So sometimes the bar graphs really seem to help. Same thing, we broke it down by gender. We broke it down by program. And we included science scores as well. The other thing I want to talk about is how do we use this data? We use this data with our teachers. We use this data with our students. We actually use this as one metric to improve student achievement. How are you going to do that? Because right now we're looking at math, for example. And this is a low score, but it's a lot of security. So what are you going to think about? And how are you going to think about it? So, so the diagnostic information is intended for teachers to look at where were we low? Where were the scores low? What were the questions that were low? And then how can we actually drill down in our classrooms and work with those students, targeted intervention using New Jersey peer systems to support, making sure that they're using our coaches. It depends upon the level. We have coaches at the elementary level, so they could be working with our teachers, give them skills, we need to give them strategies to use. We look at our pacing guides to see where we are um, performing lower. Um, overall, I will tell you math is a concern not only just in New Jersey, but nationally because it's cumulative. So that's where you're seeing kids have really had um, the lowest performance across the board, and it is a major concern. Um, for us in particular, math is a strength in Manchester. That was always an area that we really performed very well. So now it's a matter of looking at the prerequisites that we didn't get and filling in that void. So how long are those going to take? I know it was this week when we did that story by Brenda, now they're looking at how long are they going to have to be talking about the way kids are being asked to be able to respond to questions and mathematical practices? Well, let's say five or five weeks. Oh, using different strategies and different yeah. approaches. Yeah. Um, well, I was taught very differently. You were right. Um, I would say that the trend is probably more like 10, 15 years, where you know, yeah. 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 I would probably say, um, you know, doing the addition a little bit differently. We were talking about maybe um, using different strategies. Um, yeah. That's the biggest piece of the math to change was not necessarily. The Biggest shift that happened, and it's really a little transition from Common Core to be able to have our state standards again. It was really about having correct articulation of the team behind the math, so that way there's a connectedness. But the biggest step is that we're seeing across is exactly what Kristen Sperlita had just described, and that because math is so foundational, that during COVID, we saw that there were extreme deficits. And in order for us to be able to truly remediate, we need something like a diagnostic. And we use tools like a coherent map, so that way we can start mapping out standards that happen from sixth to grade level, for me through services like an intervention, a computer system of support, basic skills, pull out such instruction, supporting those learners, so that way the progress will eventually accelerate learning enough for them to keep on on grade level standards in conjunction with the standards that they missed the past couple of years. So Well, that's exactly what this does. That's so, absolutely. right, we're able to, with this in conjunction with um, Linkit that we use, it actually tells us what that student's known across school development is. So, what are they ready for? What standards are they ready to experience? And then the teachers are actually working on that so they can call for construction, basic skills team to push in. So that way, students that are ready for on grade level content, they get that. And then the students that need some remediation of the previous grade level standard, they can fill in the gaps. So that way, they'll eventually. <laughs> what, what I will tell you also is that um, we saw Dr. Severance that was peer reviewed um, this evening. She's been working with us on really using our benchmarking. We're looking at our pacing guides, working with our teachers and administrative team to figure out like how can 
you accelerate the learning? And that's really the focus because, you know, typically the child would come with these scale sets that they would have, but we have all different types of scenarios. We have kids that come into other districts that perhaps were virtual for the entire year. We have our students that were hybrid part of last year. So we're looking, and then you know kids work at different rates of development. So we're trying to keep that all into consideration. And what we're doing is creating differentiated activities. That's why even in our math classes, we're using stations and locations so that if a child, not everybody may need a certain standard to be covered. Some kids are ready to move on. So that station would be specifically for those children who would be guided math. We're using our interventionists. We have a lot of um, IRP and ESSER funds that we're using for either before or after school programs. We're also using that money for summer programs because you know there's a natural regression if children are missing two months of, or two and a half months of school. So we are also comparing what did we see from the assessment results that were done in the spring and what, what did we see with the diagnostic that was done in September, October, and was there a problem? And did those children that attended our program, did that in some way assist them and help them? Some of those activities that we developed for those summer programs for kids that didn't attend, we're using them in the regular classroom because children are we're seeing there's these power components of standards that kids miss. So we need to make sure that we close those gaps for them because math builds upon each other and those mathematical practices. And what Mr. Barron and I was explaining to all of you is that it's more about the process too. And you know, how do we get there? And, and so kids can use multiple strategies in multiple ways. And sometimes just showing them a couple of different ways of doing it, they get a click and they're able to go on. But um, I wish I could answer the question. I don't know how long it will take. But I know it's very good. And we, we know there's a sense of urgency here. And we know that the teachers are feeling like this data is very important. So the timeliness of getting this out into their hands is very, very important. That's, that's part of what we're looking at right now. So um, what, we were, what we initially did was we, we presented to the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment. And then what we ended up doing was we had our own assessments that were done during our programs just to see in terms of how effective one was. So we used that data to do the effectiveness of the program. Then what we did was that, did here? that is not in there. Um, that data actually was part of the, our documentation and accounts to see did we have an attendance? Did we have a program for fall? Um, I can tell you that kids that came and came to see me regularly, they did well. And then the reason why I wanted to look at that is how much of a drive was there for those children that took the advanced already, perhaps they had proficiency, but then you're looking at this the starch farm and saying they slid. Um, if you're familiar with the we separated the tasks into when the summer versus the kids did. Lincoln, Lincoln could allow us to do that. We could use that information as well. We've done that kind of by hand because we wanted to make sure that we're looking at every data point that we have and get it out to our teachers as quickly as possible. Um, what I did want to say was that we were trying to make sure that also our benchmarking, because that's the most immediate information. Um, but what I was going to say about Lincoln is Lincoln, when you do the Lincoln benchmarking, it actually puts students in a group that's considered a bubble group. We had a lot of conversation about this because what does that actually mean? So those are the kids that met proficiency, but they're the lowest 10% that met proficiency. And those are the kids that you really need to focus on in your classroom because without targeted instruction, without clear focus, without looking at those standards, those kids can flip. And so that's been our focus right now, looking at those benchmarks. The other thing is, is that our teachers are asking us, I was just speaking to the high school team, they can't wait to see the benchmark date because they want to see now we've used this. Let's see if we strive. Like, how are the, ch the children performing? Are they performing better? And obviously, the benchmark date will give us guidance on how, what do we still need to do before NJSLA or before the NJGCA. And one thing that we can look at for our scale, um, Mike, is that we can look to see if the students that came over the summer, how they fared through the year to see if we can make some progress. Remember, not only the about progress is going to be important to know if we compare it to end of grade level and kind of look like summer and end of grade level if we want to see when we yeah. do that yeah. in particular in math we can see that across the grade level if they need as much or more growth than their peers. Yeah, and 
or a delayed opening or a snow day or really anything, you'll get an instant alert. And in some cases, it might come prior to your Blackboard text message. So just we're really trying to cover all bases of communication. We have lots of great stuff happening, and we just want um, the community to be informed on everything. So if you haven't joined um, the alerts on the website, we encourage that. Congratulations to our teachers and ESPs of the year. Um, they were nominated by their peers, and, and we did recognize them. And we're going to have an actual recognition later in the year at the Board of Education meeting. We'll, uh, we'll invite them. Thank you to Mr. Staples and Mr. Perkins for their time with the Board of Education. I appreciate uh, the ability to be able to have conversations with you and tell you work through some difficult challenges. So I appreciate that. And um, on behalf of the board, I actually have certificates for you both. So hopefully you'll hang them proudly in your homes. We do have one retirement on our agenda tonight, and that's the Sicilian Lang with nine years of service in Manchester, but over 20 years to the New Jersey the educational community. We wish her the best of luck um, on her next endeavor. Um, new hires, I just want to make a general statement to the Board of Education. Thank you again for trusting me and giving me the ability to hire the team. We were able to capitalize and, and, and really bring in some excellent candidates and offer employment immediately. You'll see several of those critical positions have been filled. I'm happy to report that um, we only have one position that we need to fill right now, which is for a Spanish teacher at the high school, uh, which we desperately need. And um, this is my shameless plug that I get everywhere that I go. We need bus drivers. So if you know someone that is interested in being a bus driver, even if they want to work part time, we will train you. We'll do everything you need to know so that way you can operate the bus safely and have the DDL. So if you know someone, please have them contact their office. Um, you heard from Dr. Severance on strategic planning, so if you do have any questions about that, um, that's something that I'm going to be presenting at my next job with John, just to give more updates on, on what that's going to be. And just um, save the date, I know I include this for you, but March 16th at 5.30 is going to be our big strategic planning event, and we're going to likely do that at the high school. They have the largest space for us to be able to do that, and that's really some of those pictures that you saw um, where everyone was facing each other in rows. That's going to be the big community event, and then uh, Dr. Severin will be for show on the road, visiting all six of our schools, working with students. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see what comes out of um, this planning. And like Dr. Severin said, I know strategic plans sound very scary. Um, it really is just a way for us to forecast and look forward on what's next for Manchester County. So I hope we're very excited to engage in this process and really elicit feedback from all stakeholders um, across the community. And um, the one thing I wanted to just bring up is now that we're in trimester two at the elementary school, um, our rotations and specials have changed. So now our health teacher is over at MCES. Um, this is more, we'll be sending out a letter to MCES families tomorrow just to give them an idea of what to expect in terms of our health curriculum. All of our documents are on our website, so if you want to look at this book sequence. And then we're also in the process of planning a family night like we did for Ridgeway while it was open for all families. We just want to be able to revisit that now that MCES is experiencing new health standards. We want to be as transparent as possible as, as what we're doing and give families the opportunity to opt out of pieces that um, they would not like their child to participate in. And a big thank you to the Ridgeway administration and to Mr. Jordanson for being able to um, really take the time to put together um, great lessons in terms of health, doing it um, as um, delicately as possible in terms of sensitive topics. So thank you to you. Um, and to everyone, happy holidays, whatever holiday you celebrate, and have a safe and healthy new year. Thank you. This is Diane, you know, off the top of your head. This is about 11. 11 families. Um, it's going to be going out. Um, this is going to be sending out a letter to those families. It's going to be very similar to what we did in the I know you weren't on the Board of Education. What we did was really um, just review some of the documents that are already on our website that you can review and kind of see exactly what, you, what you'll find here is that we really took into consideration 
Um, every family is going on to really try to make it as developmentally appropriate as possible and allow for them to have those conversations at home if they didn't want this happening in school and finding an alternative um, spot for them so they can have their kids at the beach and get family-like piece of the health curriculum. We do three that for every child to see Yes, I will send that out this before. Once we have the date and everything, we'll send that out to the board. Do you have your next job on the Oh, thank you. My next job on the time, right over that, is January 25th. And I'm going to be doing that at Whiting. So this is what they're ready for me. I will be there. Six o'clock. Thank you. Yes, sure. Family-like section of health, yes. There's um, board policy and then also state statute that support that we have those close to the New Jersey Student Learning Standard. And under that, um, under the health curriculum, there are several sections that would be like uh, K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9 through 12. And the reason why the language reads the way that it does is that every district implements health differently. For instance, here at the elementary level, we do the rotation by trimester where there are um, some districts that just take two weeks or three weeks out of a trimester, and instead of doing PE, they do health. We do it so that way it's across the trimester. And if you look at the health standards, some of them, um, while they fall under health, they're topics that are covered across the curriculum, such as being a good friend, <coughs> education, good hygiene, all of those things um, have, have been taught in the elementary uh, classroom existing. Now we just encompass that all into our health curriculum, and that falls under the purview of someone that's certified in health wanted to say, I would love to now have a parent. I would love to say, the meeting can be recorded. And as parents, I think it's very easy because I am used to and it was clear that a lot of us want um, not to have a lot of information in this space because parents are already like getting upset about MTA and stuff like that because they don't know. But I think with the same meeting, everything is great and open the eyes for everybody. Thank you. We appreciate that. We hope we get the same, you know, response and attendance that we did at Bridgeway. I think that was a huge testament to the success that we saw at Bridgeway with implementing those standards. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, as uh, Mr. Baronado introduced me before, I'm Senior Master Sergeant Taylor. Uh, I've been a resident of Hawaii for 11 years now. Uh, I have two kids in high school and one in Whiting, and my wife teaches at Whiting as well. Uh, so I have a very vested interest in the uh, in the district, and uh, yeah, I guess I started things off wrong. I got uh, a tour of three aircraft on Friday for the J. Rossi, the um, the Mayor Oldring was the J. Rossi. So yeah, took them out. And got it. I look forward to working with you guys. Likewise, thank you. Uh, just a, some, some organization news. So our board uh, will be holding a reorganization meeting on January 4th. They'll be here at the middle school uh, at 5 p.m. At this meeting, essentially what this board does is uh, we reorganize the new board of education. So we have some new members coming on. We have Faye Weinstein, who's at our audience tonight. Uh, she will be coming on as a new board member. Um, we have Debbie Pease, who will be our new Lakers representative. She has been on the board before. Dale Mount was reelected, so everybody will get sworn in. Uh, and Martin, and, oh, I'm sorry, and Gina, Gina as well. And we will install all the new board members and the incoming board members. And then we'll just have a small business session uh, where we approve the meeting calendars for the upcoming year and a couple of small. So it's typically a quick meeting, uh, but that will be January 4th here at 5 p.m. Uh, just a quick, two quick things on the agenda. Uh, the first one, you'll see a resolution on the agenda to approve the uh, bathroom waiver for our preschool program at Wade. Um, one of the things we have to do is if our preschool classroom does not have bathrooms in the room, we have that bathroom visible in line of sight on the room. And as long as that's there, we can apply for a waiver um, and, and, and run, run our program. Um, initially, when we did our preschool program, that waiver was included. It was already approved at the county level. 
of the county wanting us to approve this separately, so that's why it's on the agenda tonight. It's really a formality, but uh, that's why it's here now. Uh, and then the last thing was last month I spoke about an HPAC, HPAC project that we put out to bid, and we received one bid, it was significantly over budget. Um, so the board, I've asked the board to reject that bid, which we did, and we went out to rebid. Uh, we received five bids this time. The project came in about four hundred fifty thousand dollars less than than it did the last time. So on the agenda tonight, I will be asking the board to accept our lowest bid so that we can move forward with the HPAC work and where the work is scheduled is at the we have some work at the high school. We'll be replacing the unit in our high school auxiliary gym. Uh, we'll be replacing the middle school unit gym uh, gym units, and we will be replacing. Uh, the gym unit and some kitchen units in our MTS. And then outside of that, uh, budgets are due, I think, tomorrow, in case you guys didn't remember. Um, and then that process, the review process will start, and we'll start getting meetings together and all that stuff and putting our budgets together. Uh, the uh, tenure budget is typically uh, approved in late March, and then from there, you know, all the other things kind of fall in place. Um, we haven't really heard anything from the state level funding uh, at this point. Um, so we're going to build our budget based on flat state aid and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, we've done a lot of things this year. We have a lot of conversations we need to have, a lot of decisions we're going to need to make on some things. Uh, so it'll be a, it'll be a very uh, busy fun season. <coughs> all right. Uh, any more members um, I had the opportunity to attend um, the box cheerleading competition in the Poconos. Uh, girls did a nice job. I got to see the boys and girls' first middle school basketball game um, here at the middle school. It's nice to see the kids um, having fun out on the court. Um, Mr. Jordy did a phenomenal job with Kevin's kids. I got to participate in the wrapping and I was only there for two and a half hours and I only got to wrap four families and I just don't know how you got it all done, but thank you for doing that for our district. You did an amazing job with that. Uh, the high school concert was absolutely amazing. Uh, the talented singers and musicians uh, were just so awesome to see. Um, so congratulations, you guys did great. Um, I'd like to say I got to participate in the book fair. Thank you, ladies, for organizing that. It was uh, fun helping the little kids at MTBS shop for their books. And tomorrow I get to experience the holiday shop. So I look forward to that. Thank you, Mr. Staples and Mr. Workin, for everything you've done. I wish you guys the best. And happy holidays, everybody. Anyone else? Seeing none, welcome to the Board of Public Participation. This is for agenda item only. If you'd like to ask us a question or All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the action part of our meeting to make sense. Oh, wait, do we have any old business or correspondence? Uh, we have no old business, no correspondence. All right, we'll go to section 1A, new business, numbers one through four. Any motion? Motion. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Stevens. Yes. Mr. Keller. Yes. Ms. Georgiana. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Wing. Oh, no. Ms. Mapp. Yes. Mr. Payton. Yes. Uh, B contracts numbers one and two. I need a motion. Second. Any discussion? Call for call. Mr. Stevens. Yes. Mr. Keller. Yes. Ms. Georgiana. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Mount. Yes. Mr. Pete. Yes. Uh, C bids number one. Which is first to about twenty minutes ago. I need a motion, please. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Stevens. Yes. Mr. Keller. Yes. Ms. Georgiano. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Mount. Yes. Mr. Pete. Yes. Uh, D. Building and grounds number one. Need a motion. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Make it a tractor. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're welcome to have it. Uh, you might need a tractor for the challenge. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. Um, so what, so what this ended with this is this was a track that we purchased back in 1992. Uh, obviously, well not obviously, but at this point it doesn't run. It's essentially been salvaged from parts. 
so we do have, regardless of what condition the equipment's in, we do have to dispose of it first before we can do anything else with it. Uh, so what we'll likely do is take some pictures of it and put it out on our website. If anybody wants to take it off the parts or whatever you want, scrap. We do that, otherwise we just bring it to scrap. All right. Mr. Staples. Yes. Mr. Keller. Yes. Ms. Georgiana. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Uh, Ms. Mao. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Second to A administrative number one and two. We have a motion, please. Motion. Okay. A discussion. We do want to thank all people for their generous donations here. Our school and our students. All right, I'll go call Mr. Staples. Yes. Mr. Keller. Yes. Ms. Georgiana. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. B personnel number one through thirty nine. Motion, please. Motion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any discussion on any of these items? Number thirty one. Number thirty one. All right. Go ahead. So that um, is an approved club that we offer at the school. It was formerly um, Bay Street Alliance that we have there. It's an opportunity for students to go and, and feel supported and really have initiatives that support um, their lifestyle that they've chosen. And so we have an advisor that um, supports them and facilitates all the initiatives and processes. That's correct. Nothing, and it has nothing to do with the curriculum. Mr. Stables. Yes. Mr. Keller. Uh, yes, we're all being appointed. Ms. Rogiano? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Mao? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. See, student personnel, one, we have a motion, please. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Uh, there's going to be a lot again. Our only student home instruction is based on the allergy. Sure, so the, the non-medical ones are actually related to a particular event where students were suspended for being under the influence of substance abuse. So in many cases, they're temporary. The end date is um, really just to support students coming back with clean uh, drug tests. All right, any right. He has been. Mr. Stables. Yes. Mrs. Keller. Yes. Ms. Georgiana. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Mao. Yes. Mr. Pete. Special services number one. Any motion, please? Yes. Any discussion? Where is the transition place? Uh, it's a residential placement. Residential? Out of state? No, in state. We do still have. We do have one that's in Maryland. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll call, please. Mr. Staples. Yes. Mr. Kellner. Yes. Mr. Georgiana. Yes. Mr. Merkin. Yes. Mr. Mal. Yes. Mr. Pete. Yes. Section three, eight finance number one through five. Any motion? Right. Any discussion? We'll call, please. Uh, Mr. Staples. Yes. Mr. Kellner. Yes. Mr. Georgiana. Yes. Uh, Mr. Merkin. Ms. Mao and Ms. Yes. All right, welcome for participation on any of these subject items.
um, more than that. I didn't get a chance to introduce myself to the youth ago. I wanted to do so in November, um, but I was the, the flu and whatever's going around. I pre k my little one brought home some wonderful things, so we were out for November. Um, <laughs> But again, my name is Delta Davis. I know there are a lot of administrators in here, principals, uh, vice principals, directors. So I want to stop to introduce myself to everybody. Um, and also to say I look forward to working with you all. I am just 13 weeks on in the, on the job right now. So I, I just want to start this initial connection and make that rapport with everybody. We, and I just want to also let you know that I will be reaching out to y'all to um, schedule some meetings and see how we can collaborate, how we can work together. I've met already with your director, um, Dr. Burton. We met and then I, we've already started that collaboration in that area. So we're looking to see what other opportunities we can provide to the community, to the school, whether it's bringing programs that are, I love these words, free, or well, the things that are free, but money that does not have to come from your budget. So trying to find ways to do that as well and just offer many opportunities for all the students. So although I'm here to serve the military connected families and to help them to navigate the education system as they come and go from base to base, um, we are also we also want to let you know that we're also here to support the community as well. So thank you for this time. It's nice to meet all of you and I look forward to working with you all. And thank you for being on with our military ambassador. Um, we're so excited that this program is kicking off and I look forward to having Thank you.